In this video, I will focus on many different aspects of the walking, jumping and sliding mechanics of a basic first-person controller. Thanks to many variables, you will be able to fine-tune it based on the needs of your game. You can adjust it to a super responsive, almost robotic-like movement, or if you want to make a hyper-speed game that relies on continuous build-up of velocity without stopping, you can do that too. The node structure for this is as follows. For the player, you need a character body 3D and the collider. Then we have two pivot nodes for the camera, which we will use for different heights of states, such as crouching on when you're prone on the ground. Then you want to go into the project settings and in input map tab, you want to add actions and keys that will trigger their events. Let's start with the basic logic that we will utilize throughout the script. The concept is something called state machine, and the first thing you want to create is an enum data type for your walk states. One of these values will always represent the current state of your controller, which we will keep track of in a variable. Based on the number of states, you will also want to make your macros for speed, acceleration, camera height for that state, and other case-specific values using the keyword constant. The basic idea of how we will manage this state machine is that when checking for input, we will update the state variable and call update collider function. The function itself is just one large switch case, which changes the values which we will use for calculating velocity and all the other parts for movement in physics process function. Now let's go over basic walking. First thing you want to do is to get the input vector. Then by multiplying the transform.basic matrix with the normalized input vector, you are going to get a vector in a world space. To rotate the player, use the input even mouse motion event in input function and rotate the parent character body player object on Y axis and the camera pivot on the X axis. Keep in mind the need to change from degrees to radians and to clamp your camera rotation so that you can't look behind you. Next thing is to calculate the largest speed achievable in that direction using the current max speed variable we changed during the change in our state machine. Quick tip, in GDScript you can achieve higher level of type safety using colon followed by the data type you want the variable to hold. Once we have our target speed, next we want to decide whether we're accelerating or decelerating. For that we just need to check our input direction vector. The next step is a bit of a preference, but if you want your character to not slow down instantly when faster than the current top speed, you need to check whether you're trying to move, whether you are already moving faster than what the possible top speed is, and if you're moving in the same direction as your current input. For a smoother change on accelerating, I'm also lerping the current target speed. In the case of going over the speed, the lerp makes it so that the target speed value is actually closer to what the current velocity is. The target speed value is then used to calculate the speed difference between it and the velocity. And that value is multiplied by acceleration rate and is then applied as a final force to our velocity. Obviously, we also have to take into consideration slopes. And while I think good old slope handling is pretty good by itself, we can adjust the movement vector when we are on a slope so that we are not pushing the player into it, but rather along it. We can do that pretty easily by checking whether the player is on a floor. Then constructing a plane from the floor normal which is just a vector that shows where the floor face is pointing towards, and then we can project the movement vector onto that plane. Also remember to always multiply by the current delta value whenever you're dealing with values that are subject to change every frame. You don't want the movement to be faster with higher frame rate and super slow with low FPS. In general, make sure the frame rate doesn't affect your gameplay. No one wants to fight dragons with health regeneration that makes them immortal. I still love gothic though. Anyhow, last thing before we call the move and slide function is to also update our camera position based on the current state. Here, the second parameter will be used as a t value for lerp function. In other words, this case of inverse lerp returns a clamped value from 0 to 1 based on what our current speed is in regards to the maximum speed during sprinting, which currently is one of the highest values for max speed. So, if our current speed is close to 0, the function returns a value closer to 0. But if it is closer to the max speed, then we get a value closer to 1. If it is above it, we still get 1. Inside the function, we utilize this value inside a lerp to now get the value for our field of view. You can think of the combination of inverse lerp and lerp as a way of remapping the original value range into a new one. In this case, it's 0 to max speed range into lowest field of view at to highest field of view range. Also, we want to interpolate the y position based on the current state. Now, already at this point, if you were to apply some rudimentary form of gravity, you can have a great controller for walking around since you can crouch, prone or whatever, but let's elevate it with jumping. Back at the top, let's define more macros. I'll go over each one of them during the implementation. 
It's a good idea to store the default gravity of our project using the project settings.get setting function. Also, if you go to project settings, you can right click on a property and copy its property path and you can paste that as a parameter to the function. The way we can implement jump is by completely changing the y value of the velocity vector once. Note that I'm using two tricks to make jumping feel nicer for the player. The first one is coyote time. This is a small time window that lets the player jump even when off a platform. Whenever we are on the floor, we reset the value and while in air, we reduce it to zero. Another one is jumping cooldown. This one works in a similar way, but is reset when pressing the jump button, making jumping more responsive as you are falling from your last jump. Now here come more upgrades. The first one is to limit the falling speed to a set value, which can be useful for some games. Another potentially fun one is to give the player a variable jump. Whenever the jump button is released, we reduce the Y velocity. Another one is to make the gravity stronger when we're falling down in order to not make the jump floaty. And the last one is to give the player more freedom around the apex of the jump. Basically, we can artificially increase the maximum speed and acceleration for a snappier movement, but you could also do the opposite and let the player go in the same direction the jump started. Next up, sliding. Let's make it so that you have to be sprinting and then press crouch button. Same as with jumping, we need some macros and we can also create a cooldown for this to make it easier to press the combination. When we change the state of our machine, we also want to store the vector of our slide so we can update it based on the ground we're sliding. For now, let's set it to the direction vector at the time of pressing slide button. In physics process, we want to keep track of our current slide timer. Instead of using a timer, we could limit the slide based on velocity. In other words, if we were going slow, no slide would occur. Funny thing is that just by saving the slide vector, and then maybe projecting on a plane when on a slope, all that's left is to add it to the velocity. Of course, we can dampen the movement during sliding to preserve the slide vector direction. Two more things to sliding. It's a good idea to give the player the ability to stop it voluntarily, let's say by jumping. And the second, when we are updating our camera position, we can make it so that the camera rotates to the side to give some feedback to the player. With that in mind, here's one last thing you can implement for your movement, which is head bobbing. To achieve the effect of a head bob, we will utilize the other pivot node we set up at the start and the sine and cosine functions. The head bob var serves as an input value for the functions and is slowly increasing in value as the game runs. This setup can result in an infinity-like movement of the eyes, but you can experiment with the values for these to achieve different results. But that's everything for the basic character controller. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover in the future videos, let me know down in the comments. Also, if you like my videos, I'd be grateful if you subscribed. But that's everything for me, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.